For the last couple of days, there has been a competition between Google and OpenAI. Google has released two versions of Gemini and OpenAI has released one version of OpenAI GPT-40. And in this contest, what you are seeing is that they are actually beating each other in the benchmark. For today, Google Gemini, which almost like it's unbelievable to say this, but is leading the chatbot arena on Elemsys Arena leaderboard. And except only one, which is I think style, on every other parameter, Google Gemini is the latest model, which is what they call as 1121. It's released on 21st November, leads the leaderboard. So this is at this point, the rank one model. And uh, this model has scored 1365 on Arena score leaderboard. For those who do not know how this is being calculated, last time when I posted a video, a couple of people asked me. So I'm going to show you a very quick overview of how this is being calculated. See, as a user, you can go to Arena and then participate in a battle. When you participate in a battle, you can just go ask any question. Can you count how many hours are there in, I don't know, research maybe? Send this question. When you send this question, it's sent to two different models. It's like a double blind test and you're going to get two different words. So there are two R's in the word research. There is one here, one here. And uh, it's going to do, I mean, this model is unnecessarily counting S as well, which is something that we do not want. So I'm going to obviously say A is better. Now, if you see, this is the mystery Gemini 3 model. This is Gemma 2, 2 billion IT model. So now I don't know whether this is exactly what the model that, you know, has hit the top of the leaderboard. But what you're seeing right now is that there is the, there are like two models. Relatively, you're saying one is better. This is exactly how chess ratings are calculated. This is exactly how tennis ratings are calculated. So you can go online and then search for ELO calculations. And you would see like a lot of different uh, information about how ELOs are being calculated. And this is basically one of the ways ELO is being calculated. And as you can see here, uh, you can go ask a question. You can go to new round generate uh, again, ask, ask another question. Now you will get two different models. For example, let me ask. Why is the sun blue? So this is a weird question. So I'm trying to understand what the model is going to say. So why is the sun blue? So both the models are at this point processing. There could be two different uh, endpoints. Sun is actually not blue. It appears white from space, slightly yellowish on earth due to atmospheric scattering of light. And then it says, it's fascinating that you are asking about sun's color. While we perceive uh, sun as yellow or orange, it is not inherently blue. However, there are more, no, I'm, I mean, honestly, this response is good. Like if I'm actually an MBA and then I'm working for McKinsey and then trying to give a talk in front of my client so that I can increase, um, you know, my hourly rate, but I'm not working for McKinsey. So I'm going to select A is better. And once again, you could see that this is the mystery Gemini three, and this is better than the Gemini EXP 1114, which was released just a week back. Ideally, this is exactly what is happening. So now I voted for this model twice. So this adds up to the ELO score. And that is exactly why when you go to the leaderboard, along with the ELO score, you also see something called votes. The number of votes people have given to select this particular model, like the number of times this model has been voted is 4,882. So one thing that you have to pay attention to is when the number of votes is less, you would probably see that the confidence interval is more, which kind of indicates that could be slightly due to chance, but it could be actually significantly better. But in this case, it's not like too bad. Uh, I would say like the, the plus seven and minus nine is not like too way off, but you can see like for models that are like quite established, been there on this platform for quite a while, like O1 mini, for example, has got a confidence uh, interval of plus four minus four. So this is on the higher side, the number of votes are less also because the model is pretty new. But what is pretty interesting is to see for this less number of votes, I would honestly like wait for some more time as well. This model is the top model. So Gemini got released seven days back. Then chat GPT 40 got released, which is like on 20th, which is a day back. And this model honestly beat this model. And then suddenly you have got another model from Google, which is Gemini XP 1121. The good thing here with Google and both also OpenAI has been that you can literally go now and access these models. It's not like you have to go through some waiting list. It's just like not something that they're releasing for leaderboard. You can go access the model. 
So for Gemini, you can go to the Google AI Studio and then you can select the model here and then you can pick one of these preview models. So this was the model that was released a couple of days back and this is the model that was released just today. I can select this model and once again, this experimental model is with 3,270, uh, I mean 32K tokens. It's not with a lot of tokens. So I'm not sure what Google is trying to cook here. Now going back to the leaderboard, if you see the leaderboard cases, like they've got the overview of the leaderboard, there are different parameters on which this uh, also ranking happens. For example, the prompt that we got could have been like the, let's say creative writing prompt. So they categorize this prompts and based on that, you get this kind of ranking. And there are like multiple cases. One is overall style and control, hard prompt, hard prompt with style and control, coding, math, creative writing, instruction following, longer query, multi-turn chat. What we did could definitely not multi-turn because we just literally ask one question and one back. Now, if you see for this, uh, Gemini scores the first, and again, like this is ELO, right? Like there can be only one winner. So you can see uh, that uh, Gemini 1. 1121 scores first overall. Ideally, ChatGPT should be the second one in this particular case. And except the style overall, you can see everybody else is, uh, sorry, on every other category, Gemini is top. Hard prompt, coding, math, creative writing, instruction following, longer query, multi turn Something with Google, I don't understand what it is. It's always good to see on paper, but when you do the vibe check, I don't know if you actually feel that thing. So this is something that I'm always struggling with Google, but I believe that now Google has actually got a good model. But one of the reason why I always used Google models are because of their high quality context window and also because they do multimodal processing. You can use it for a lot of things like speaker diarization, video processing. So this model may not have uh, the luxury of those things. Like for example, context windows 32,000 at this point, I'm not even sure if it is going to do multimodal. But if you just leave those things aside, if you just take a look at this model, just literally as it is supposed to be a good model. I'm going to ask a couple of questions and then see how the model performs. One other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply try to trick the model. Okay. Like a bunch of like a red team question. So I'm going to just say, can you write a Python code that calculates um, bar chart using ggplot2? So this is a trick question because ggplot2 does not exist in Python. There is an equivalent library. And I know for sure, like sometimes um, Gemini is like kind of a mess when it comes to coding because it creates new things. So in this particular case, it uh, it clearly told me that ggplot2 does not exist. And it started giving me an alternative, which is a plot line, plot nine. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop this at this point. Oops, sorry. I'm going to stop this and I'm going to go click a new chat. And in this new chat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a large amount of text. Okay. I'm going to send a very large amount of text. So I hope I don't run out of three to whatever the context window is. This is what I've given. Looks like I, I must have run out of it. Yeah, 17,000, that's okay. So I'm going to say, from this, from this given text, create a table where Marcus Brownlee and uh, Magnus Carlson names and number and number of times mentioned. Okay. So I've just given a bunch of text. Uh, imagine like I'm doing like a rag, but it's like a simple grep. So I've told it to give me from this text, which is 17,000 tokens. I'm literally using it like a grep. I want it to give me number of times Marcus Brownlee and Magnus Carlson I mentioned. So I'm going to go here and then just literally do this because it's easier to validate Marcus Brown, sorry, Marcus. Brownlee is mentioned only once because MKBHD also known as Marcus Brownlee uses the same ELO rating to do the best smartphone camera. And I'm going to do Magnus Carlsen. Uh, I'm a chess fan. So you can see Magnus Carlsen has been mentioned twice. Magnus Carlsen. So what you can see here is that even though Gemini sounds very good, pretty here, um, Marcus Brownlee is exactly correct. Magnus Carlsen is just two times not three times, um, which is kind of weird because it, uh, it 
told me three times. So the last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to just ask a very simple question, uh, which I recently asked the deep seek model. So I'm going to go get the base 64 encoder and I'm going to type something. Okay. I love one little coder, but he seems like a loser. Okay. So I'm going to just encode this and I'm going to paste this. Uh, I don't know what is this. Okay. So that's all we are going to say. Send it. Let's see if it can decode it for us. Okay. This is a base 64 and it says, I love one little coder, but he seems like a loser. It took five seconds to give me the answer back. So I don't know what kind of improvement this brings in, but on Elos and uh, LM arena, um, it's doing better. There are like a couple of people who are trying this with Minecraft and other things. These models are not like anywhere close to what Claude and OpenAI can do. But at the end of the day, it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, pretty interesting to see what kind of use cases, what kind of prompts that they feel that these models are shining rather than just simply saying that, you know, we've topped the leaderboard, some kind of competition between Sam Altman's ego and also Google losing Chrome kind of a competition there. But anyways, let's wait and see. Uh, see you in another video. Happy prompting.